Okay, good morning class. So today's the last class for the, before we go into the evaluation uh, portion for the time-based uh, time effects. So I wanna start by going quickly over the rubric for this. And then as I'm teaching this class, hopefully all these um, points for the rubric will become clear. Um, as we discussed in the last, uh, classes um i want you guys to be able to prepare a reverb for staging like i've mentioned before reverb for staging requires you to set up one unifying reverb sound that will be applied to basically all the instruments so they all sound like they're in one cohesive cohesive stage right um i tend to do that with creating sculpting one nice verb and then once you've done that uh, i copy that um, verb to a second and possibly a third aux return and then adjust the pre-delay early reflections and possibly tail a little bit so it makes it sound like whatever goes to that second and that third instrument a uh, uh, third verb whatever instrument goes into that second or third verb sounds like it's somewhere else on that same stage but the location of that stage is is different right and that's going to help it give you that sensation of if it's a vocalist and the vocalist is three feet away from you verb one is going to make it sound like it's that close verb two could be your the one that makes everything sound and everything from from five to seven feet away and then your third verb can be whatever's in the in the back in the rear of the stage or upstage right and that could sound like 10 15 feet away and you assigning these instruments to the different staging reverb levels helps create that depth We'll also get into more things in this class on how you can also use delays and other aspects for staging in depth. That's, that, that'll be part of it. So here is reverb for staging. That's kind of what I've explained. We'll also now again, based on that explanation of reverb, how that applies to staging, using delays for staging and creating depth. Reverb for tonal shaping. That goes back into the, the, the reverb explanation on the multiplier factors of, of the decay. You set your decay to one second, and then you have a multiplier on the high frequencies at 4K, you multiply that by 1.5. That means you have 50% more decay on the high frequencies. That means that that reverb is gonna sound quote unquote brighter or it's gonna extend the high frequencies of whatever on the uh, of those instruments that get run through it which could in turn make that instrument sound brighter because the high frequencies are lingering longer uh, you could also do the same thing on the low multiplier um, if you're putting a, a multiplier at 400 and below and you give it a multiplier of let's say 1.2 now you're adding 20% more decay on that low end. So instead of it being one second, it's gonna be 1.2 seconds. And you're now creating more low end extension. It lingers longer. It might sound fuller, might sound thicker. Those are part of the tools you can use for tonal shaping. You can also drive things to the extreme where you can take the low multiplier, put it at 800 and put it at 0.5. So you're only getting half of the decay. And then you go to high multiplier and put it at 1.5K and put it at 1.5. So you have this huge tilt of barely any low end decay, lots of high end decay. And that's a cool little trick I like using for background vocals, where I just want airy background vocals but i don't want them to be to sound thick i don't want it to take any space down there i want them to just shine and float above everything else boom that's a way to tonally shape the response of that 
instrument group, in this case, background vocals within the mix. Everybody following that? Okay, and um, you also have, let me change this there, just a the camera angles, I can see everybody more. At least have a visual. Okay. I do, I do have a question about what you just mentioned for the background vocals. Shoot Wait, it. Are you are you sending them all to the same reverb when you do that, like busting the background vocals separately from the main vocals to get that effect? Yes. So, and and, and that's a very good question. I and, and to expand on that, um, I love layering effects. So I could have. A, a reverb staging um, uh, aux, and I send that um, that background vocals to that reverb stage reverb that puts them fifteen feet back, and I just send a little bit of the background vocals there, so they're within the uh, the performance area, right, and then this other reverb that I'm explaining that has no low end, lots of top end, I would categorize that somewhere between a tonal shaping verb and a effects verb, because it's it's a it's a, a non realistic uh, reverb that I'm creating to enhance the instrument or the group in this case. So then I am sending a second, I have a second aux that might be labeled as background vocal verb. Uh, sometimes I'll label it if I'm layering some stuff on it, it might actually be called background vocal effect because I'm trying to separate background vocal verb, which could be a staging verb and background vocal effect, which could be a tonal shaping effect like this. And I do that because I could have some harmonies happening during the verse that I want them to sit behind the singer, but I don't want to enhance them. I don't want to exaggerate anything on them. I just wanted to sit there nicely behind the singer. And then when the chorus comes in on that same background vocal bus, now there's 10 more vocals pop up. I now unmute the background vocal effects and that whole thing just shines and, and brightens up the whole thing. Is that answering your question? Yeah, it really did. I appreciate that. Sure. Okay. Um, and thanks, Rick, because that kind of gets me through these transition also. Uh, so then reverb as an effect, like I just mentioned, it's 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 you can use reverb to exaggerate, um, to exaggerate aspects of an instrument or a group of instruments. You can also use reverb as an effect to dislodge that instrument and put it somewhere else that is not part of that performance stage to 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 kind of put a weird spotlight on it where this instrument isn't part of the rest where why is this sound like it's floating above or it's in in, in a certain box and it just floating there separate from everything else that's that those cues are really interesting for for the listener that's part of that ear candy where if you create a nice stage and then you pull things in and out of that stage with reverb effects you're you're automatically creating movement in in that song okay so reverb effects could be could be anything from like putting it in a spring verb um, and, and exaggerating that spring verb and, and putting it on a verb that's like four or five seconds long. Um, think of uh, a, um, a, a bridge on a, on a song and then the drums go half time. And then you put this three second explosive bright verb on the snare and every time it it hits it just explodes and lingers the whole bar until the drummer hits that snare again and then explodes again and then as soon as the bridge is over you eliminate that and it goes back to the normal normal verb and everything goes back to oh i, I i've taken the listener out of this experience uh, of stage transported them into 
this huge ethereal space and then brought them all back into where they were before. That's what I'm talking about, reverb as effects. Okay, so make sure you make that distinction when when you're creating a verb for staging and a verb as as an effect. A verb as an effect could could also be you put a a specific staging verb for a vocal or lead instrument, and then you add a plate verb that has a character to it that that adds to the tonality and and sets it apart a little bit but the vocal is still within the context of it and i'll have an example of exactly that what i'm talking about now um, within the one of these mixes that i'm pulling up um so it doesn't have to be weird crazy thing and the cool thing is tonal shaping and effect can be one and the same depending how you're doing it everybody following that so for the next three, delay staging, tonal shaping, and delay as effects are very similar. I'll go, I'll go and start the class explaining how you can use delay in staging to create depth and movement within a location. And pretty much anything that you do with a delay, whether minor or, or exaggerated, could, could change the tonality. Now, delays tend to be a little more pinpoint, so you can shape the brightness or darkness of a delay, and it doesn't necessarily glue itself the same way as a reverb does. But if you have, let's say, a, a guitar lead line, and then you make this kind of AM radio, very filtered, high distortion sounding delay, you hear the guitar line and that delay now sounds brighter and above and as that delays and bounces it kind of gives this this effect of the guitar melody moving up in the mix because it's here first and the delays are brighter so it now makes the guitar sound like it's moving upward in the mix but in a more controlled way than if you did that on a reverb and the reverb like I mentioned with the background vocal, that reverb is gonna create this wash and it's gonna push it back. The delay is just gonna give a tonal shift in the height of the mix without necessarily pushing it back in the mix. Um, and then delay as an effect, we'll kind of get into that. And, and delay as an effect, also falls on uh, what also falls on that category is anything that that you you that can be a time based effect based on a delay so choruses and flangers are a time based delay effect so applying a chorus and applying a flanger on your mix automatically gets you a credit for delay as an effect everything else is the same as usual you know, my opinion always counts on this and your naming. Okay, so it's it's two different aspects of time based effects reverbs as a whole delays as a whole applying the three same concepts. I think that's pretty simple and straightforward. You guys good with that. Cool. Okay. Delays to enhance space delays as an effect chorus and flanges. And again, make sure you go over the chapter, uh, these chapters, because it they go into it and, and delve into it a good amount. Um, the uh, Mix Engineer's Handbook had, does a good explanation on the usage of it, but what's really cool is you, when you read the interviewer's use of those reverbs, which I've I've done a lot of research. Um, another good book was um, Behind the Glass, which is a whole bunch of other interviews with amazing um, engineers and their use of of effects to enhance something. And you know, I would make mental notes and then try these things out. And it just becomes a catalog of ideas that you pull from when you're trying to create. Uh, interest in a mix okay 
Um, let's start. And let's start by some definitions. Let me move this out of the way. Does everybody know what a delay is? Let's start with the simplest thing. Does that require uh, an explanation or a definition to anybody here? Don't be afraid. No, we're good? Okay. Does everybody know or has anybody heard what the Haas effect is? I know I've heard of it, but I forgot, honestly. Okay. Um, let's start with the definition there, and because that's important on how on how I use and interpret delays as a function of of creating depth. Okay, so the Haas effect um, is a binaural psychoacoustic effect that causes humans to hear two separate auditory events as a single sound when they are separated by a very short delay and are similar volumes and waveforms. What does that mean? Let's break it down. The word binaural, uh, binaural refers to how our ears come together to help our brains perceive the location of a sound. In this case, the sound location occurs based on which of these sounds we're referring, uh, we're referring to arrive at your ears first, which is why this is called the laws of first waveform. If two nearly identical sounds arrive at your ears within five milliseconds to 30, it's really about 35 milliseconds of each other, and are within 10 decibel volume range, you'll perceive them as one sound at the location of the waveform uh, to arrive first. Meaning, if, if that sound arrives to your left ear first and 10 milliseconds it arrives to your right ear, I said that right, yeah, left, right, uh, <laughs> then it's going to sound like the sound, the source of the sound is, is to the left of you, right? The second sound still affects the perceived location but not as you expected, because it's still understood by your by our brains as one sound. You'll hear a widening of the sound across the stereo field, although you can still pinpoint the exact location of where the sound is coming from. What does all this mean and why is it important? Okay, the other, yeah, this is the other one I need to get. Okay. This means that this is how you hear sound. When you, if normally I'm, uh, I'd be doing this lecture in, in the classroom, I'd be standing right in front of you guys. And I would pick one student. If I'm standing right in front of that student, my voice is getting to their left and right ear at the same time. If I now move five feet to the left, my voice is going to get to their left ear first. Then the sound of my voice is going to travel across their face and into their right ear. And since sound can warp its way around objects, bend its way around objects, the space that, that in the separation of, of your ears help tell you location, right? And now that delay in time from one ear to the other tell you the professor is five feet to the, to the left of me. But since my voice hasn't changed in volume, it's, it's the same volume, there is a slight decrease in, in sense of volume because your, your face can absorb some of that, your clothing can absorb some of that, and it gets there with just a slight difference in intensity, but the intensity is so well matched that it just says he's there, but I perceive him in the stereo image. My voice doesn't sound completely isolated to the left and you don't hear me on your right ear like you would in a Pro Tools scenario where you're artificially creating something like this, right? Um, 
how does this help you in in this class and how does that help you uh, with staging and and everything else that you can use in this class let's kind of get into that um, understanding how location works for your ears and and the difference that shifts in milliseconds perceived from one to the other can create a a, a can be used as a tool to widen a, a instrument widen the perception of something else uh, and, and let me pull up this one more time this is the other page I want to go into um, how how uh, how to a mixing trick which uses a Haas effect okay um, I will put this uh, article on on the announcements you can go over the explanation but I will kind of explain it my way over here also you basically set up a a delay right now where we're, well, let me get to where I need to get I have these two right here great and I will create a bus and like I've been mentioning in this class Anytime you're using time-based effects, you will create an aux. You will put the plugins on that aux track. You will assign a bus, and you will name that bus. Do not leave it saying bus one, bus two, and let me guessing wildly forever trying to figure out what's what. Okay, let's call this Vox. delay effects then we will go to the lead vocal go to the bus assign vox delay effects to it okay give me one second trying to avoid some background noises coming in the recording okay so now we have proper routing uh, I tend to um, I tend to name the aux track the same thing I name the uh, oops <laughs> that's not gonna work I tend to name the Aux track the same thing as I name the um, the bus send, which makes sense, right? Because I can see that I'm sending it to box delay, and I can roll to where my effects are, and I can see the same thing la labeled. And why I do that also is from here to here are all the auxes I'm using for effects. This is a mix of my different staging uh, reverbs, my different staging delays, my effects uh, uh, effect, uh, reverbs and delays, and I normally put this here as here are the, uh, the effects that I'm using in general that I can apply to anybody within the instrument group. If I am dialing up a specific effect for just this group like for example I tend to have a set of of guitar delays and effects and I, I group that within the guitar section and then I tend to send that output of those effects to the same outputs on the console that I'm using on the guitars so it has a unifying sound same thing as on drums I tend to put whatever drum verbs I'm using within that drum bus or that drum section within the uh, within Pro Tools mix so I have quick access and I can make those adjustments that also a it aids me that if I need to print stems I can now go to the drum section 
solo the drum section and print a, uh, a drum stem and the verbs go along with it. Same thing as guitars and stuff like that, okay? Going back to the vocal, okay. Let me mute this. Give me a thumbs up to make sure that you guys are are hearing this when I hit play. I'm just gonna solo the vocal here. I've been walking in a dark room. Right. I've tied my laces. Tripping over the truth. Okay, so we're hearing female vocal, soft, airy. She's very close to the mic, very intimate. Um, this song has a lot going on to it. There's a lot of uh, atmospheric um, synths. Um, there's some guitar parts, nice melodic parts, but there's some other guitar parts that are like drenched in effects to just kind of create this kind of ambiance type of ethereal thing, right? Um, and as I'm mixing the song, I'm trying to figure out location placement and stuff like that. So let's start with uh, Haas effect and delays. So here's your simple, straightforward um, delay from Pro Tools. You have a, the delay amount to the left channel and delay amount to the right channel. You have feedback on both. Do you guys know what the feedback on a delay is? Let me just get into no, it. No, I don't. Like number of times it actually delays, right? Y yes and no. That is the re ending result of you of you raising the percentage of feedback. Um, but I, I want to define that a little bit better because there are plugins that have a knob that say repeats. And you can say repeat it once, twice, three times, however many times you want, right? And although the repeats is a feedback system, um, here you are literally creating a feedback loop like the output is being fed back into the input and the percentage of that will create uh, how many repeats are perceivable and how long will it take for those delays to, to still linger on. Okay, so the if you have zero feedback, you will hear the sound of the voice delayed by 250 milliseconds and you'll hear it once because it's not fed back to each other. If I now give 100% feedback, uh, you will hear the vocal 250 milliseconds, then 500 milliseconds, then 750 milliseconds, then one second. It's going to repeat over and over and over. Okay? Um, and depending on the type of plugin, you can actually get into feedback, the squealing type of feedback sound also, which can be kind of fun to mess around with. Um, low pass filter, you will see a lot of delays that have a low pass filter and possibly a high pass filter as a way to shape tonally the sound of the delay. But in this case, a low pass filter is being used to roll off the top end if you, for example, have a vocal that has a lot of S's. And you don't want the to be just 
delayed multiple times and it just annoys the crap out of you, right? Then you have a section that is the synchronization section where you can tell it to synchronize to the tempo of the song, in this case it's 72, and you have musical notation, whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and you can add a triplet or a dotted notation to any of these notes. Everybody follows that, right? You can make a delay, be free of the tempo by just using milliseconds, right? But if I start clicking here, you will see that the milliseconds are changing, uh, mathematically doubling every time as I'm, I'm going to a larger uh, note, note value, right? Then we have the modulation section, the rate and the depth. You guys want me to give you an explanation of modulation also, right? Yes, okay. So, modulation. Um, mod you use a low frequency oscillator or an LFO to create modulation within the parameters of a delay or if you get into synthesis um, there there are many types of plugins effects synthesizers software that will use an LFO low frequency oscillator as a modulation tool for a certain parameter and some plugins uh, which I, I won't get into it this class but if you get into the into fab filters timeless 3 you can basically assign a LFO to any parameter within that uh, within that effect and go crazy at it. Um, I suggest you go to the website, their website, and look at the demo of, of it. It's, it's amazing. Um, so, what is a low frequency oscillator? It is a oscillator that's going to play a tone. Let's say it'll play a tone from one hertz which means one hertz is going to be a big sound wave, right? It's going to have a very long wavelength. So it's going to take a long time for that wave to do one cycle. So in other words, that's going to translate as that one hertz is going to modulate that instrument or that parameter in a very slow manner, okay? cool thing is if you have proper chart you can pinpoint the tempo you can enter the tempo on the on the chart and it'll give you the whole note half note quarter note eighth note sixteenth note value in hertz so you can time the modulation to the tempo also and so if you want on a parameter to move in and out to the quarter note beat you can you can make that happen with with that okay so in this case it's modulating the delay and the depth is the amplitude of that oscillator uh, oscillated wave so that when one hertz how loud is that one hertz the level of it if it's let's say uh, negative 40 dB, negative 20 dB, negative 10 dB, uh, that, uh, that translates to depth. That means as that parameter is moving up and down with the cycle, how far up and down is it moving from center? So if it's modulating, let's say, pitch, um, if is it going to just move 100 cents down 100 cents up and down or is it going to move a thousand cents up and down that's depth and that's dictated by the amplitude of the waveform everybody following okay let's dig into this let's start with the parameters as explained in 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 this article. I'm going to start with a 10 millisecond and I'm going to start with a 0 millisecond. So only one side is being delayed. 
on the vocal. I will send 100% of the vocal to this delay. I'm going to do like I keep asking you guys in class. Anytime you have an aux uh, effects return or you have a bus, hold down command, press the solo button, and it is now solo safe. So as I solo the vocal, this will always be working. Let me unbypass this and let's hear this. I've been walking in a dark room. And notice that you hear the vocal, you hear it shift here, and then you kind of hear it shift to the left after. So you have kind of this movement kind of clockward movement. But now that vocal sounds wider than this. I've been walking versus in a dark room. Oh, let me make a quick adjustment here. I've been walking there you go. My bad. in a dark room. That was going to a different output and and getting some latency there. So here we go again. I've been walking in a dark room. So ignore the previous uh, um, response you were hearing. Notice that this is a very slight change in in the vocal it, you, you're not hearing like the bouncing you're hearing that was crazy latency there because of the routing um you hear the vocal but now you hear the vocal sort of in a in a space and if you go if you if we go back to the reverb lecture and i how i tried to explain early reflections early reflections fall under that Haas effect parameter. Because at early reflections, you tend to hear those between the first five milliseconds to 35 milliseconds. Okay? I've been walking in a dark room. And unlike the first time I tried to play this where you had the excess latency, you don't hear a clear delay you listening to this and you don't say the vocal is here and then it bounces there and I can hear multiple of them. It just sounds like the vocal got wider this way. I've been walking. But it's not just that. The vocal almost sounds a little thicker, right? But there's also something weird happening on that vocal. You, you hear this kind of... And the vocal kind of loses a little of that crispiness. Everybody hearing that? That is called comb filtering. Comb filtering is every, just as every wave has a wavelength, that also is a measurement of time, right? Because frequencies are uh, a velocity, so it's uh, is time over distance, right? So now, um, if you have a delay of 0.5 milliseconds, that is the that is the length of time that a 1k frequency, uh, the the whole cycle of a 1k frequency, and what that's going to cause is that you're going to have 1K being notched out, canceled. And just like when we were in the, in the EQ lecture and we were going over the video of harmonics, that's also going to mean if the comb filtering is applying 1K, the harmonics of 1K also get affected. So 1K, 3K, 5K, 7K, 9K, 11K, 
all those frequencies are being notched out, like the notch EQ where it, you're basically canceling out 1K. So that means that this vocal now is playing back almost like Swiss cheese with a whole bunch of frequencies missing. Comb filtering is something you normally want to avoid. And it happens naturally when you are too close to a surface. For example, you don't want to be recording a vocal and you're here, the microphone's here, and two feet behind the microphone is a solid wall because your voice is going to bounce against the wall and be picked up by the microphone at four milliseconds uh, uh, after and it's going to cause comb filtering based on this math. And you can hear it sound like this. I've been walking in a dark room. I'm panning it up into the middle. I've been walking. That's bad, especially if it sounds that that much, right? Uh, how you minimize the comb filtering effect, one, in this case, we're panning it out. Two, here is where the low low pass filter comes into play if if i have 10 milliseconds unfortunately you're 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 starting at 50 150 250 all the way up let's do one millisecond well that doesn't get into it too much let's do five milliseconds I've been walking. If I now filter those high frequencies, I've been walking in a dark room. Now that comb filtering is less apparent. And again, comb filtering is happening because it's the exact same sound bouncing off of a surface and and getting back to you and in a slight interval of time and I'm sure to all this you're like and why is this an effect and why am I gonna want to use this in a mix because in the other aspect to this also is why don't I hear that if I'm in a classroom and I'm talking to you and I'm moving left and right, I'm not hearing comb filtering. You kind of are, but the thing is, instead of it being one singular frequency that's comb filtering because there's one depth, there are thousands of delays happening within reverb in different delay times that are causing multiple comb filtering anomalies within the entire sound of my voice in the classroom. This is why you want to treat a room this way so you can eliminate comb filtering, audible comb filtering. Okay? Now, how do I make this useful? Here comes modulation. Modulation is going to warp the sound of this female vocal and not allow it to be a perfect clone of that vocal and then it's going to minimize and to some degree possibly eliminate the comb filtering. So let me go back to the 10 because that was a little easier to hear. I'm going to leave this one where it is for now and I'm only going to change the depth and the rate. Here we go. I've been walking in a dark room. I've been walking in a dark room. I've been walking in a dark room. Without the depth, you're turning it off. In a dark room. With it. 
I've been walking. And you hear a little bit of that 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 moving is is you you kind of shifting that comb filtering happening up and down, but now that since it's not static, it doesn't feel the same way. So now you're shifting that image so you're hearing more signal coming from you from the right side and a slightly delayed from the left side. Okay? And if we flip this, you'll get the same thing. Let's exaggerate this a little bit more. Let's do 21. Um, I got into the habit of, of doing prime numbers. And there's a whole explanation uh, on it that a professor of mine gave me. So I, that always kind of stuck in my mind. I've been walking in a dark room. So now you have the reverse of the image. Now the image sounds like it's coming stronger from your left and something else is happening on the right, slightly delayed. And again, it's making this sound wider when you really have some fun is when you now start dialing it up differently on both sides. And I will do, let me do 1.21 and let me do this. I've been walking in a dark room Versus, I've been walking in a dark room. Again, I've been walking. Now, again, I'm sending a hundred percent of this, so this is very audible, and you're hearing it by itself. You can tweak it. I've been walking. In a dark room. So it's not as audible, but when you mute it, I've been walking in. in a dark room. Notice that now instead of the vocal sounding like a, a, a pinpoint within the center image, it now becomes like a wider ball and the vocal takes up more space in that center. Anytime you're hearing these pop vocals and that vocal sounds really, really big, like larger than life vocal, they're applying some sort of delay, modulated delay effect to give it that width and roundness to the vocal. Because it's not just the fact that it sounds wider, there's, it almost sounds warmer and thicker. Everybody hearing that? I have a question. Shoot. Um, so when I hear it, she sounds like a robot. With it on? Mm-hmm. Because you're, you're associating a little bit of that kind of auto-tune to it, right? It, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it, like, <laughs> it, I can hear the bouncing, so I can I can hear it switching back and forth. Right, and you're hearing you're hearing the synthetic part of this effect, which is something you hear all the time. But mm -hmm. since you hear it in reverb, and it's it's it, it's like if I put a hundred of these units all with different parameters at the same time, then that syn synthetic is not uh, effect's not going to happen because there's so much of it that now it turns into reverb. Uh, but you're not accustomed to hearing it in isolation. This is, this is how these effects t kind of work. But here's the important thing. This happens within the parameters of the Haas effect. And that's why I want to start here. Once you go past 35 milliseconds, your brain switches from it sounding like an like something that can uh, that has comb filtering um to something that sounds like a a separated delay a separated bam 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 and now you don't hear it that way 
now it stops being a, a psychoacoustic phenomenon and now it starts getting into a delay effect as I'm, I'm creating a slapback effect or something like that. And of course, once you get past, uh, once you get into 25 milliseconds, the comb filtering starts at 20 hertz. And by the time you get to the sixth or, or, or seventh harmonic, it, it gradually diminishes how much comb filtering, notch filtering is happening per harmonic. So it's not as noticeable. So once you get to like 35 milliseconds, it's only affecting the, the sub and the bass frequencies. So it doesn't bother you. It doesn't have that synthetic sound. Does that okay. kind of help? Yeah. But now, and, and this next example, tell me if this helps. I'm now going to play the vocal dry with the keyboard part and then I'm going to place it on and then tell me what you hear. I've been walking in a dark room I've been walking in a dark room You guys now hear how without it the vocal sounds small thin in your face detached but with it it now gets placed within a space and it sounds bigger and right off the bat the vocal sounds more interesting because there's more uh, more to hear on that vocal what's your perception Kimberly that was weird Weird in a good way, or weird in a bad way. Weird in a good way. Like I can, I could hear that first one without it, and then the second with it, making it sound wider, roomier. Like right as she starts to sing, you hear ever so slightly, but then it disappears. Your because your brain stops focusing on it, and your brain starts, your brain stops focusing on it and starts. Uh, processing as the psych psychoacoustic phenomenon that you're accustomed to hearing. That's why a verb makes a vocal sound thicker. It's this multiplied by a thousand times. Okay? So, how am I going to use this to benefit not just as the fact that here's a vocal, I just made it sound wider. I can apply this to a guitar and I can now change, make that guitar sound wider within the pla this placement of the stereo field. So I can take a guitar that's panned at, f at negative 50 to the left. I can create a Haas effect type of delay to it and pan that guitar within that effect to 50 plus 50 to the right. And now I'm creating a bigger image of this guitar. Let me pull up, let me see if I have a little snippet of a guitar. Some of these guitar parts are already kind of drenched in effects. Okay. And let me do this. So if you hit that uh, FMP, where the panning follows the fader, then everything's going to be matching, right? It's one way to do it. Let's hear this guitar part. 
by itself. That delay, that bounce delay, it got recorded. That was the pedal that he had. And that's an example of a delay as an effect, right? A cool rhythmic effect. Now I'm going to add this. And it's sending in 100% on both. Notice the guitar that's penned to the right isn't affected the same way because the delays are slightly different. If I now change that and let me do 27, let me do this 19. Again, I'm kind of sticking to prime numbers for the fun of it. It's just kind of changing the movement within the space that if I mute it versus hear that movement within the depth of the space, right? And part of what's happening is the delay that's happening on the right side is is causing code filtering within the instrument, but the delay that's happening on the on the left side is causing phase issues with each other. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll flip the phase. Once I kind of find a timing that I like and how much I want to push something back within the 5 to 35 milliseconds, I'll flip the phase. I'm not sure if you guys are hearing this, but when it's flipped, the image actually gets wider. You hear the guitars and you hear the delays happening farther out than the guitars. When it's not flipped because of comb filtering, it's canceling that widening effect a little bit. And, um, and, and you're just kind of hearing it not as wide, a little blurrier. When I flip the phase, it, it is actually making the guitars move outward. Is anybody actually hearing that? Play it again. Yeah, I'll just repeat these two lines and then I'll flip the left the phase on the left side. So notice that now it also sounds a little brighter when it's flipped, when the phase is flipped because those high frequencies aren't, aren't canceling and that's giving you that image shift. Was that clear for you guys? I can hear it a little bit better that time. All right. It, this is one of those things where you have to practice it at home, especially with headphones. It's very... It helps a lot because it's really exaggerating the effect of it. So um, when you do that uh, phase flipping, do you do you hear that and know that it needs that before you apply that effect? Or, or do you just like to test it out kind of? Both. As soon as I as soon as I dialed this up, I could hear the upper frequencies canceling too much is not giving me the spread out effect that I'm looking for when I dial it up this way. So I, I know to look for that because I've, I know the effect I'm trying to get for and I've experimented with this for years. So 
that that goes with with the experience. And, but and the cool thing is you can flip the left side and and it'll shift the frequencies one one way. But if you f- phase flip the right side, it'll give you a slightly different color. Because I get that. OK, I got you. And the comb filterings are going to shift a little bit differently. OK, so what happens if we're not uh, panning the these parts in the same direction? What if we're panning the guitars in the opposite direction? Let me leave the, the phase on. So we this giving this is giving us the widest effect. Here we go. Versus and again back to panning it inward opposite and without this effect at all first note how kind of just dull it sounds without a simple delay and it's just a one bounce delay I haven't changed the feedback yet it just brings that guitar to life and and gives it some location space and, and richness to it right what are you hearing when I'm panning it opposite and when I'm panning it hard to the same direction is there a difference to you guys the same direction made it sound kind of uh, like thicker, but like heavier and not as like, I don't want to say like when you pan them opposite ways, it was more flat, but it just felt wider, like, like kind of like stretching rubber. Like you're pulling it and it's still the same density, but as it gets wider, it's like hearing it from both ends as opposed to it all to one side or thick on one side at least. And then somebody else, what did they perceive when it was panned? opposite to each other is that a little harder can I play it again yes please all right so keep in mind what Jackson just explained on how he was hearing it when it's panned in the same direction but when it's panned inwards what you're gonna notice is instead of the guitar sounding like they're stretched outward and they sound like they're here and then the echoes of it move away especially if you're on speakers this is how you have sound sound farther away than your speakers in in theory when you look at your speakers this is the where your tweeter is on each side that's that's the edge that's the box that you're in and nothing should sound past farther right or farther left than your right and your left speaker. Correct? Because there is nothing there. When you deal with Haas effect and these type of effects, that's how you can psychoacoustically move images farther past the limit of your speakers. So when you're panning in the same direction, you're pulling outward. When you're panning in opposite directions, you're, pull, you're stretching inward. And it's going to it's going to make the guitars float in a different way. It's not going to sound wider. It's just going to move the image a little bit different inward or outward. Here we go. So when you see this in orange, that means it's, it's going uh, in the same direction, panned outward. And then when this is not on, it's panned opposite to, e- to each other. Let's start outward. That's dry.
you guys hear the difference? I can exaggerate that difference by now adding feedback. And now you're starting to, you, you should start to get a sensation of a reverb tail because now it's more of what happens in real life where the, the sound keeps bouncing around a little bit, right? Let's move on. Keep this in mind, and I'm gonna I'm gonna move uh, keep expanding on this. Okay. So here, this is here's a delay, and this is how I use delays to to create depth. And you just hear how it moves it from it's just being completely flat and dull to now there's some depth to this, right? And the more you mess around with the feedback and mod and modulations, it changes. Now, um, when you start modifying different parameters, you start uh, uh, you start getting into other type of time-based effects like chorus and flange. Okay, and, and one little quick note before I move on, I tend to do this type of Haas effect delay in a similar way that I do verbs. What do I mean by that? Just like I create uh, two or three different verbs of the same kind and I and have variations of it so I can have the vocal go to one, the guitars go to another, and the drums go another to change depth, I will do the same thing. In this case, Here's one of, of those uh, auxes that I have as part of my template that I've called depth delay two. I have a depth delay one, two, and three. All of them are, are have presets that I've created already. And, and I just pull that in uh, as part of my mixed template for whatever works or whatever I need. In this case, I only pulled one because I'm using other delay effects to create the other movements that I needed. And just to give you a little bit, this gets a little complicated, but I, I tend to start, anytime I put a delay or a modulation type of effect, time-based effect, I tend to put an EQ first so I can control the response of that, uh, of, of that comb filtering of that effect with the shape. So for example, in this case, I was probably using this on a guitar or a vocal. So I'm dipping by a dB and a half at 1.8K. So that part of the guitar that has that bite and definition string pluckiness, or that part of the vocal that have the consonants, I don't want that part to be uh, run through the effect as much so it doesn't blur it as much so I keep the intelligibility of the vocal on the consonant side but I affect more the lower part of the vocal where as you hear me apply this effect to some the vocal and the guitar it sounded thicker and warmer that's that's a frequency range where I really want that to be audible more than in the area where I need it for the presence and intelligibility now, if this is not an instrument that I need forward, then I might not apply that EQ. Also, if it's an instrument like a synthesizer that has some low end, that comb filtering effect might not work in my favor and might uh, give a little, uh, it might loosen the low end, might not sound as tight and defined, so I might filter it or shelve it down, okay? Um, here is one of my presets for the same mod delay you saw me do. This is the uh, uh, Universal Audio plugin. And I have different delays. Look at that, 17 and 23. I have modulation rate and depth. Uh, and then we go into what I'm going to get into now, pitch shifting. This pitch shifting is I'm modulating the pitch differently. 
uh, shifting the pitch 10 cents up, 10 cents down. And then, then I'm running this into a verb. So this delay is also sent to a verb, which is now I'm doubling up on the effort of creating different depth, but placing it in, in a certain box. And then that mix might vary from 100% to 50% how much defined delay I'm, I'm wanting to get. Okay, let's get into the difference between you having this vocal and the guitars can stay there, yes. Just going through uh, a modded delay and then it going through uh, something like a micro pitch. This micro pitch is a default setting on the Eventide H3000, and it is probably one of the most famous um, settings in that box. So much so that there are mixing engineers that have two of those units. One of them always stays on on that micro pitch setting and never never gets changed out of that. The other one they'll use for whatever more complex things they need. Basically, your sh this trick is applied in so many ways, in so many songs. You're taking the exact same vocal, you're pitch shifting one side or both sides, and one uh, sorry, you're you're delaying one side or both sides. In this case, I'm delaying on only on the right side, not on the left side. But then I am pitch shifting up and down by the same amount. In this case, nine cents. So it's now giving you a, 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 a heavier difference between each vocal. Uh, being applied, let me exaggerate this again. And go back over here. I've been walking. In a dark room Versus I've been walking Notice this is a similar result as I was getting with this modulation plugin. That's part of, uh, of the charm of that. I can exaggerate this a little bit more also. I've been walking in a dark room. And start adding feedback. I've been walking in a dark room. I've been walking in a dark room. And when I start adding sins, I've been walking. In a dark room. Got it. I've been walking. In. In a dark room. Okay. So, let's jump into the rest of the time base effects. Do you, do you guys know what is the difference between a chorus and a flanger? Anybody? A flanger? A chorus effect or a flanger effect? Isn't a flanger like a wobbly piece of metal? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, then I, I don't know the difference. <laughs> okay, now, now you got me curious. Okay. Um, as I was telling you, you can take a delay and you can add uh, uh, an LFO to modulate different parameters. If you are t delaying the sound and you're modulating the pitch, meaning the pitch is going up and down, up and down like this, that is called chorusing. Why? Because if, if, all five of us 
start singing a background vocal part, everybody singing the exact same melody, two things are going to happen. Everybody's giving a click track. None of us are going to sing exactly at the same time. Everybody's going to have just a slight different feel. So that means that all of us are going to have a specific delay time, right, on this tempo. But even though all of us are trying to sing the same note, none of us have perfect pitch, or maybe some of you do. I sure as heck do not have perfect pitch. So I will absolutely make a chorusing effect because my voice will not be perfect and will create that weird synthetic voice that Kimberly dislikes. But since it's times four, it sounds like a choir, hence the, no, the name a chorus effect. So it is a chorus effect is a fixed delay but a modulated pitch because all of us are not going to hold the pitch the same way. Some will add vibrato, some won't. And those rubs create that chorusing effect. So on a plugin like this, <coughs> you're controlling these aspects. How many voices? Am I going to have six singers? Is there a pre-delay? Meaning, I'm here a foot away, but Damien and Gabriel are three feet away, and then Kimberly and Jackson are five feet away, so there's a difference in that pre-delay. You know, there's a difference in that space. And then here it's alter it's giving you the the two things that tend to modulate. Uh, frequency, in this case, is referring to the pitch. You can also modulate the amplitude because all, all five of us are not going to sing at the same intensity and hold that intensity. So our amplification is going to change a little bit. Okay, But in the simplest term, a chorus is a modulation of pitch with a fixed delay. So I can now do this. I've been walking in a dark room. I've been walking in a dark room. I've been Voices. Chorus is something that I tend to apply a lot on background vocals. I might have stacked the vocals uh, three or four times already, and I, I want to enhance that chorusing effect, so I'll, I'll throw chorusing on it on top of that. It, it makes it sound like more people. It also makes it sound thicker. By the way, this plugin is absolutely free at Acon Digital, and I use it all the time. The okay. Now, a flanger is uh, a delay, of, a modulated delay effect. Well, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So this technique that you're doing right now with the course, um, let's say you went in, you recorded a single person, but you wanted to add vocal layers. Would you use something like this? To a single vocal? Mm -hmm. Depends what you're trying to accomplish in the production. This won't make it sound like I have 10 vocalists mm -hmm. if I only recorded one. But like for vocal layering. It, it won't imitate vocal layering mm -hmm. exactly because for that, it, it, it's, it, you're going to need to record a couple of vocals. 
yeah. it can enhance that perception of vocals. Like if I just recorded three and I run it through a chorus like that, it, it'll thicken it up and it'll make it sound like there's more. You'll still hear the defined three vocals though. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go, for example, Beyonce layers tons of vocals you're not going to be able to take this one vocal and make it sound like a Beyonce track. Yeah. Just to kind of get that clear. Okay. Okay. Uh, so a flanger, instead of, uh, instead of it being uh, an effect where the instrument is being delayed and the pitch is being, sh is being modulated now the delay time is being modulated. So if if the delay is let's say uh, twenty milliseconds, and you're hearing the vocal, especially within this Haas effect, right? Let me go back to the chart. Did I just throw away the chart? Maybe I clicked it out. Twenty milliseconds, we'll hear we'll hear some comb filtering two twenty five two seventy five, right? But now the depth is going to shift the delay to ten milliseconds. So now I'm hearing comb filtering at four fifty to five fifty, and then it's going to it's going to shift it to times two is going to go to 40 milliseconds or 30 milliseconds. Let's say it's giving a plus minus 10 milliseconds. So then you're hearing this comb filtering happening up and down and the rate's going to tell you how quickly it's doing it, which is a whole different sound than chorusing. Chorusing tends to thicken something out. Flanging uh, tends to force tends to force it to sound um, tends to force it to sound uh, I don't know it, it makes it stick out okay um, let me let me pull this out here's a flanger and I'm going 100% and here we go I've been walking in a dark room. I've been walking in a dark room. I've been walking in a dark room. You're hearing this and it's probably sounding that sounds kind of annoying. I I love using flangers. It it's especially on guitars and and other things like that where I really need something I really need something to help me make an instrument stick out. For example, if you are a guitarist, electric guitarist, you tend to love layering guitars. Um, and let's say you have 10 guitar parts already on the song and you have this lead guitar line that you're trying to make it stick out. But Verb's going to make a blend. Delay might give it some sustain, but it doesn't necessarily make it stick out. We can use the other tools that we have. For example, we can EQ it to avoid masking and use additive EQing so the tonality also has a certain edge. But because it's the same guitar and it's the same guitar cabinet, the tonalities are so similar that harmonically it just still becomes this one mass of guitars. 
a flanger because of the comb filtering you are forcing the tone of that of that guitar to act against itself with the comb filtering and the sweeping delay and now it suddenly sounds like you have this whole other tone that that is shifting and since it's not a static tone unlike when you play the guitar part especially if you copy paste it one after the other it's the exact same static tone along with all the other guitar parts now you can modulate it not in tempo now you're going to have this shifting tone that makes it detach from everything else I've been walking in a dark room. I've been walking. Go to the guitar part again. While I wait, I agree. Once you've heard this in this example, you probably will start recognizing it to like, yes, I've heard that on on multiple guitar parts in throughout rock history. Um, it is very much used a lot uh, with uh, with electric guitars. Um, you you've heard this uh, on some of Lenny Kravitz songs and some of Jimi Hendrix songs where tape flange was created by you having the exact same uh, the exact same tracks uh, exact same reel to reel on two reels on two tape decks and they would hit play at the same time and then uh, one person would just slightly put their finger on the tape reel to slow down the mechanism and then slowly take it off and then the tape machine is trying to catch up to the to the synchronization and then you put your finger again and you slow it down and you hear this okay um so really just sounds flat so this is a way for you to create a tonal shift and and kind of shine a light on it and and really make this instrument stick out okay you guys hearing and understanding the difference between chorus and flange? Okay, cool. Um, then you have something like this, that this kind of gets really crazy with the flanging. so much with flanges and and a little can be very percept very perceptible okay so I uh, one of the things I've done for years is I have a guitar um, I have a guitar effects 
um, I have a guitar effects chain where again I have an aux called guitar effects aux box aux send called guitar effects the track is called guitar effects I have an EQ I have a micro shift so I'm automatically shifting the pitch and 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 detuning slightly detuning and delaying the sound then I am flanging that entire guitar sound then I am delaying that guitar send in this case in this song I've applied it to the tempo so it's an eighth note delay then I have a MS widener so let me show you what that that is doing if I take that guitar and then I send it to my guitar effects. Let's let's put this in pre delay so so I can mute the guitar and um and you can hear the sound of the guitar going through the effect. things I really like doing is is when you get into delays as effects you having an instrument that is being delayed perfectly to tempo is gonna is gonna feel one way it may add to the groove or to the rhythm and which might be cool in a case like this but that also is gonna make it blend into the beat when you start adding triplets especially to a lead instrument where you want the lead instrument not to blend in it, it, it can automatically help you take that um, take that uh, vocal or that lead part somewhere else let me play around with this here for a minute <laughs> My own shadow, but I'm walking on a tree line now. Now I'm running through the forest. So here you're hearing the the vocal on an eighth note, and the lyrics are kind of stumbling upon itself. You hit it to a triplet. While I'm away, I feel like I know I'm It's not. It's not getting in the way of it the same way. You can kind of just make it a little wider. While I'm away, I feel like I make this more subtle. I know But if I go back to that eighth note, while I'm away, out of green light, I'm again, now you hear it stumbling upon itself, and it's kind of distracting, and you kind of want to lower it more. But the fact that I had it triplet a little farther away at the same level. While I'm away, out of green light, Adding a nice motion to it and and in intricacy and and depth to it without stumbling, I will sometimes do that with dotted also. You and I sometimes will play with the triplet and dotted. While I'm away, 
including in this song when we get to this ending part um, I have I tend to have a, a more of an effects delay right here this is the long delay that long delay has a half note triplet on one side and a quarter a dotted quarter note on the other side and you probably thinking that sounds kind of crazy it it is kind of crazy and it it works phenomenally as as like a little ear candy thing that I'll throw at the end of phrases for the food. Running for the forest, not running for it by itself. Running for the forest, not running for the forest, running for the forest. And that uneven left and right, and since it's not on on the rhythm, on the groove that way, it it it, it doesn't interfere, doesn't blend in, it just adds this kind of ear candy type of movement. If I now go put this in context for you guys. It's subtle, but you hear it kind of like, here's the vocal and it expands out. Here's the vocal and expands out. It's a way to, to mess around with the stereo image, keep the vocal focused, and then in the ends of these lines where there's space, throw that so there's some movement out or, uh, outward. It, makes, it enhances the stereo image and, and adds a little of that kind of ear candy movement to it. Everybody following this till now? Okay, so that covers... Uh, no, I need to switch over here. That's covering delay as staging, delay as tonal shaping, delay as, as an effect, right? And then let me just kind of explain a little bit more on this on the, on the re reverb side. So on this song, I'm trying to create a certain mood and tone to, to the song. It starts uh, very kind of dark, uh, dark and maybe a little depressing uh, tonally. And just by the, the initial lyrics... I've been walking in a dark room so she's setting the mood there with the vocal with interpretation i wanted i i really like using the tools in my hand especially effects to enhance the mood so the first thing i did was uh create a verb that suited that um anytime you see this DSP7K, that's my even tied 7000 unit. I will dial up a reverb or an effect, whether it's a delay, a chorus, a flange, or a verb, or something else like that. And I'll dial it up and I'll print it through the whole song, as you see over here. Um, and that's, why, that's how I kind of commit to these type of things, and that way I can get more use out of it, right? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a dark room for her to sit in. Let's listen. I've been walking in a dark room.
I can't, I can't hear you. I think you're muted. Oh, sorry. So a, a, a room is a small box, right? It's not, it's not a concert hall. It's not a club or a pub. It, it is a, a small contained space. And to make it darker, I'm enhancing more the low end decay than the high end decay, and I'm filtering the top frequency to force her to sound within this dark, depressing box, right? I've been walking in a dark room. That with the keys in this intro. I've been walking in a dark room. Without that verb. I've been walking in a dark room. She sounds attached, but now. I've been walking in a dark room. It really puts it like she's there in this confined space. Next, as the verse develops, she adds a background vocal harmony. And I didn't want to include that harmony within the room where she was in. I didn't want it to sound like a second person joined her in the room because now she's not lonely. I add, I dialed up a whole other verb effect to make it sound like it was a voice, like her subconscious, like an, another voice telling her something, whether that's good or that's bad, whatever that is, you hear how she wrote the harmony and that might make it sound happier or eerier. You be the judge of that. And I've tried so hard just to find the And I fought so hard just to measure out. How does that effect on the background vocal harmony make you feel? Um, I mean, it's like you said, it doesn't sound like it's in the same room, which is, I guess, it helps the song or helps the whole theme of the song um it definitely does sound like it's like outside outer like i don't know it just doesn't sound like it's coming from the same location as the original voice which is good cool right and then yeah it, it, and i i really like creating images and as i'm trying to imagine how i'm mixing i'm trying to imagine music video and what okay. these instruments play in the storyline and, and what they're doing in the storyline guides me into creating this stage. So here is me creating a stage for the vocal. She's in a room. Mm -hmm. And this background vocal does not belong in this stage, right? If you mm -hmm. hear the background vocal by itself. I've tried so out. Just you find the word. And, and let me show you this is a, a bit of a complex uh, thing I'm doing. There is there is this effect, which is the even tide. which goes back to kind of that background vocal effect I was saying. It's a bright, shimmery, almost a little metallic, so it makes it almost sound airier and ghost-like. ghost, ghost -like. But then there's this long verb. And that long verb goes here and here. I'm actually sending it to two 
<laughs> two ox verbs because to me one verb wasn't enough. Verb one is this one. I really like this verb as a character, co very highly colored uh, verb. Just you find the word I fought so hard Just to measure all. If you want like nice, huge, ethereal sounding verbs, go for this. And this is not such a long verb. 2.9 is pretty long. But I'm using it because there's some movement in the left and the right. It's making that sound wider, right? But then there's this verb, which, look at this, 6.7 second verb. That's just whatever note harmony is, is happening against the vocal, that mood, that sensation, I'm forcing it to linger in your ears for a long time. I've tried so hard Just you find the word and I fought so hard But I love this verb because you can sculpt it at verbs in a, in a way you can't any other type of verb. I am I am putting a notch filter not on an EQ, a notch filter on the decay which is very specific to this type of verb. So at 3.5K, I am not allowing any reverb decay to happen. And on 312 hertz, I'm not allowing the vocal to decay. I don't want the clarity taken away from that voice, from that harmony, because um, I wanted that part of the vocal to still sound attached to the lead vocal. And then that 300 range was the, the range where her vocal harmony was sitting. I didn't want that to get uh, blurred too much. And the combination of both of these... I've tried so hard Just you find the word Then I add the eventide. I've tried so hard just you find the word. Find layering and layering and layering that way add to now this whole other atmosphere that's happening behind the lead. And I've tried so hard Just you find the word. And I Don't ever be afraid to layer effects. It does take time to sculpt each one so they're not overlapping functions. Like you hear all three of these verbs are, are doing something different, but they sum to this larger than life type of effect that's aiding in this storyline, right? Then on the lead, when the band comes in, the drums come in, I start trying to move her out of that box and add a different space for her to be in so that she's still singing within the room it won't be long but then i add this it won't be long for the light to break Now, if that sounds weird and familiar, that's a flanged verb. The vocal is going through a flanger first, then going through a chorus delay, then going to a verb. That's a patch within the eventide. That's why I love eventide uh, boxes, because it has a lot of this complexity patch uh, in its patches. So it's, it's creating a verb that sounds separated and different than the lead, right? But it's adding that thickness and 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 um, multiples of it, and the flanging is making the vocal effect sound mono initially, 
and then outward. Down and out. Down and out. So it, it doesn't make the vocal immediately sound wide. It keeps the vocal centered. Now that there's a whole bunch of things happening around it. It's giving it depth, but since it's flanged, it's not pushing it back and then moving it out of the way. It won't be long for the light to break through. You hear the movement outward as a tail, but out again, losing the image of impact. It won't be long for the light to break through. And as the song develops, I'm then getting into this part where I start adding the medium delay. I'm not running. I'm not running. Oh, I'm not running. I'm not running for the tree line now. So that's a delay as an effect, right? And that's that delay effect has a certain tone which I am filtering some high frequencies, low frequencies, and then on this plugin, I'm adding some warble, which could be a little bit of that pitch shift and saturation, adding lots of saturation. So it sounds not real. It has a process sound to it, so it helps it detach, but it gives a color to it, whether it's brighter or darker. So it's helping with that movement, right? Within, con within the context of the song. Again, I've, I've dialed it up so it blends in. I take that off. She's now kind of talking in pitch more than singing. So that, that delay gives it some sustain that I'm missing on that vocal now that she's not singing out. So you I'm using delays in many different ways to aid the performance when, when there's nuance to it, but I need to create sustain without it sounding obvious. Then you have the delays that I used over here where I have the triplet half note and the dotted, uh, dotted quarter note where that's an effect to just kind of like really make it kind of stick out in a different way. But I'm also using delays as the Haas effect that I'm using on some other things, right? Um, and I'm layering verbs that add depth and I'm laying verbs that add character and tonal shaping, like on that background vocal, even on the lead where I'm kind of creating that vocal as a dark room to place her on a stage. But this song, because it starts dark and somber and at the end it gets more hopeful, I, I, um, I didn't want to put her in the same stage as the band to make her feel isolated. Again, going to that storyline of kind of making her feel all by herself and hopeless, right? And as the song brings in, starts, uh, starts developing and, and more instruments come in, she gets more hopeful, then I start pushing down that dark room and bringing out other effects that incorporate her vocal into the performance. Um, where are the background vocals? And it's, it's a lot of fun to sit down and deal with layerings like this. So you can do stuff like this on, on these background vocals. <laughs> So those background vocals are going through a couple of things.
that's dry. I have this verb. Actually, that verb, I ended up not using it. Uh, right, I ended up, let me just bring that up for a minute. Here's the VSR verb I was using, I was showing you the previous class, which again, I, I love using it for staging, right? So they were, it would place it in a room, but I ended up putting it through that long verb that I was using on the background vocal. It has two verbs. And to me, that wasn't enough. And then I found this patch on the eventide. Which is a third layer of effects that I'm actually adding to the lead vocal in that area also. So I'm, I'm doing a lot to the lead, but I'm doing a lot to all these vocals. Okay, um, any questions on vocals, layering, and how to apply all this to your, to your next evaluation? A lot of this exp is experimental. What I, what I want to hear is minimum two reverbs that you create for staging where they're, they have a mainly a difference in pre-delay. So I can hear a, a front line and a back line of instruments. Then find some other verb that works uh, to create color or effect, right? Um, I think Kimberly had asked a question before what verbs should we use that would be compatible um, uh, Avid has uh, I believe you get these for free it was H verb no sorry this is this is waves let me go back to Avid here for a minute you have reverb 1 this is a good verb for you to use, uh, reverb one, and then the other verb that you have access to, because it comes with the audio plugins bundle, uh, is uh, revive two. So you have two different delay, uh, two different types of verbs you can use. They have their own particular sound and different parameters for you to use. Uh, so you. If you just use that uh, for reverbs, you'll be fine. And you can basically do anything that you need with the uh, mod delay. You can create a, a nice chorus vocal effect. You can create some hot stuff that way. So just using those main plugins works uh, for, for this class, okay? Uh, so if you have something like the Waves bundle that has that falls within the diamond bundle that has the meta flange and chorus stuff. I have that too, but that's if you want to experiment on, on, uh, on all these things. Uh, but again, that's the main thing I need delay for staging, at least have one delay, at least have one delay that is using that host delay where the left and the right have a slightly different delay time that is in between 5 milliseconds to 35 milliseconds and just run something through it add a little bit of modulation to the left and the right so it doesn't sound comb filtery and um, and then use that to create some depth and stuff and then anything that you do as delay as an effect where there's ping pong where there's a specific uh, one time slap type of delay that will fall under delay as effect, and pretty much anything that you do with a delay will add some sort of tonal shaping. Is that pretty clear? Cover all the bases there? Yes. 
cool. If you have any doubts, send me um, send me questions. Next Friday, uh, we're in Thanksgiving break. So there won't be class next Friday. Uh, so the following Friday, uh, I'll um, you'll have the it will be the next class that we do. I won't get into the evaluation because if we get into the evaluation, then we'll have issues of, of we'll, we'll miss the last uh, class and a half that we have left, right? So um, I'll, I'll post the grades and then if somebody has any questions, I can do a one-on-one -on -one at some point later, okay? okay. So that's it for today. I will, um, I got your email last night.